Welcome to Academy of Ultrasound. I'm John Sheldon, one of the instructors for the Academy, and tonight's class is going to be talking about Echo 233, Week 3, still dealing with Chapter 7 of Essentials of Echocardiography and Hemodynamics. We're going to continue our evaluation on how to evaluate LV diastolic filling. Uh, tonight's lesson, or this lesson, deals with uh, pages 228 and 229 in your Essentials Manual, or textbook, and again that's chapter 7. If you'll look at the screen, you can see on the left I have the page 228, and on the right I also have the copy of your student notes, uh, lecture notes that you have available on Moodle. So let's jump right in. Um, to continue our discussion of diastolic filling, on chapter page 228, you need to be totally aware of the different grades that we all have in diastolic filling. Grade 1, which is on the left-hand side, the prolonged, where you have a small e and a large a. And typically that, like I said before, is referred to as EA reversal. And it's also referred to as grade 1 diastolic dysfunction. Grade 2 is your pseudonormal where your left atrial pressure is beginning to go up and you have 13 to 18 milligrams per millimeter of mercury in your left atrial pressure and your E is now bigger than the A and it gives the simulation or gives the formula idea that it's still a normal waveform. The E is larger than the A. However, a couple of things that you need to be aware of and be, need to, be, to look for is this pseudo-normal with a Valsalva maneuver will switch back to grade 1 or EA reversal. How we determine that is if we're going to do a tissue Doppler where you take the tissue Doppler and uh, take a pulse wave signal at the mitral annulus, the tissue Doppler is going to show an abnormal EA as opposed to a normal EA. That's how you can determine that the left atrial pressure is up and give you the clue that you would need to go ahead and do the Valsalva maneuver. Grade 3 and grade 4 deals with the restrictive And if you can get a grade 3 or 4, if you can get this restricted, which is a high E, small a, if you can get the restricted with a Valsalva maneuver to shift to a pseudo-normal or a prolonged, so if you can get it to shift out of restricted by using a Valsalva maneuver, then that's indicative that it is a grade 3 and it is reversible. If it does not shift with Valsalva, then it is a grade 4 and it's considered to be irreversible. Again, you see over here where it refers to, on the right hand side, it refers to differentiated between grade 4, 3 and 4 by a patient's response to a Valsalva. To determine that, e, that increased LA pressure, or left atrial pressure, again we use the mitral Doppler, tissue Doppler E velocity. Let's go ahead and flip to page 229. So if you take the mitral E velocity divided by the tissue Doppler E prime velocity, taken at the septal annulus or the latter annulus of the mitral valve, it's used to determine the LA pressure. If the E, e prime ratio is how it's, re how it's referred to, is greater than 8, LA pressure is elevated. If the lateral E to E prime ratio is greater than 12, the LA pressure is elevated. 
If you've got an LV inflow pattern that shows restrictive, remember, high E, small a, but the tissue Doppler is normal, patient could be considered to be possibly a constriction candidate. If you'll look over here on A, on left left hand side of the page on A, let me get me a little spotlight to show you where I'm talking about. Your mitral inflow, your E is 120 centimeters per second. Your septal annulus, your E is 0.8 centimeters per second. Your E to E prime gives you a 15, indication of significant elevation in left atrial pressure. With restriction, you still have this restrictive pattern, but your E to E prime comes out to be 6. It's indicative of having constrictive pericarditis instead of restrictive diastolic dysfunction. This is something the cardiologist will be aware of, and they'll be the ones to make those decisions. Your job is to do the test, which is going to be, I see a restrictive pattern. I'm going to try a Valsalva to determine if I can change that restrictive pattern. Therefore, I would have grade 3. I'm also going to do tissue Doppler. Um, and you can refer back to your notes on how to do tissue Doppler with the pulse wave at the mitral annulus, and depending on what the tissue Doppler comes out to be, your E to E prime ratio will tell you whether or not you have increased LA pressure or constriction of your pericardium. That's it for tonight. As always, please check Google, look for images, look for videos. Uh, if you find something interesting that you don't fully totally understand, be sure to send it to me at john at academyofultrasound.com. I'll be happy to look at it, try to interpret it with you. Uh, other than that, continue your study, and I look forward to talking to you on our next lesson. Good night.